Here we've got Big Red and we're going to use that as an example to talk about sand driving. Now Big Red is the biggest sand dune in the Simpson Desert and there it is. Um, the easy way up or the way we're going to use is up through here. You can go up a couple of other ways to the left and right as well but we'll take that way. And um, it's a pretty big dune. People are heavily loaded when they come there. It, it's, uh, it's often hot and that's why I guess you see people sort of taking a run up from about here onwards and hammering it over the clay pan flat and trying to get up here and wheel spinning and big rooster tails of sand. Well you know it's really not necessary to do that and um, let's talk about some alternative techniques and I'll prove it works with a video towards the end, end of this um, um, discussion. So sand driving starts all about um, tyre pressures and here we've got a tyre and that is the amount of tyre in contact with the ground if it's a discovery free um, at a tyre pressure of 40 psi and that's what the tyre basically looks like, like there. Not an awful lot of contact patch and that's what we'd normally have for, for road use. So if we decrease the tyre pressure then we expect that to change and of course it does. Um, the contact patch gets a little bit longer but not very much at all. That's a, that's a 10 psi difference. So we've let quite a bit of air out of the tyres for not a lot of benefit. Go down to 20 psi and you can see now that it's starting to um, slightly bag out a little bit more but look the difference between 20 and 40 is there's some but it's it's not that massive um, and yet we've actually halved the pressure here as well. So the difference between 30 and 20 bigger than the difference between 30 and 40 and that's exactly what you'd expect because percentage wise um, you're going from 30 to 20 you're taking away a third of that tyre pressure here you're taking away less going from 40 to 30. So now instead of going in 10 increments let's go down to just 5 and you can see that there's a significant difference there between 20 and 15 yet we've only taken out 5 psi as opposed to the previous jump of 10. And now we start to see the contact patch is definitely getting a lot larger. Now what happens if we go another 5 psi down to 10? Well look at that, that's pretty big. Now we've got a significantly larger contact patch. So that, that change from 15 to 10 is bigger than the change from 30 to 20, yet it's half, half the pressure there. So if you let your tyres down for more flotation, sure you can go down to 30 psi, you really haven't made that much of a difference there. You can go down to 20, that does make a difference there, but every psi you drop underneath that, that starts to make much more of a difference. 2 psi out of a 40 psi tyre, kind of wasting your time. 2 psi out of a 20 psi tyre, yep, and you're going to make a difference there. So here's some lines. Now I've put these lines to basically line up with the 20 psi um, contact patch there and you can see that at 40 it's not really that much difference to be honest between 40 and 20 there but between 20 and 10 look at that difference right there's a huge difference there and there so it's massively longer whereas the difference here not a huge amount so sand driving you want to start at 20 psi and uh, rapidly go down and often start thinking about um, 15 and even 10 if you need to as well so how does that work in practice a little bit more on the theory side of things so here we've got two tires one at 25 psi one at 10 psi and they're um, on, on bitumen and every tyre's got a flat spot underneath it of course where it bags out a bit and um, 25 psi not an awful lot of bagging out which is what you want for on-road handling um, and performance 10 psi the tyre def def um, deforms a lot as you'd expect much larger contact um, patch so how does that work out in sand well here's how it works out the 25 psi tyre sinks into the sand a lot um, it looks like it goes to the same depth as the 10 psi tyre but it doesn't. There's a lot more of the tyre underneath the sand or below the sand level than there is with the 10 psi tyre simply because you've got this larger flatter area which um, doesn't um, um, push down into the sand as much. It's just a wider contact area. Now what this means is that the 25 psi tyre has got a much greater lip to roll over here than this one much smaller lip and also the flat area here is small the flat area here is large and that way you've got a larger sort of cone of supporting sand there so what's happening with a tire in sand is basically that when you deflate your tires 
you are adding a bit of traction that that is true but what you're mostly doing is actually reducing the rolling resistance and you can see that here there's a big lip here small lip there now the greater the rolling resistance of a tire the more energy it's going to take to pull it more likely it is to spin and that is why you see these tires start to spin in sand because they're already partially there it's not so much a traction thing because there's actually plenty of traction air although you do get a bit more with, with, with that tire it's actually reducing the rolling resistance and and the other benefit is that with a tire at low pressures then it bounces around less and it's better able to mold itself to the undulations of the sand particularly on corrugations um, so you get you get more traction and less bouncing there okay so this is what it looks like in a defender here's a tire at 50 psi and you can see here that the sort of rim protector here um, quite a long way off the ground small contact patch 15 psi significantly longer contact patch there rim protector getting nearer to the ground and here the rim protector is pretty much on the ground at 8 psi and we've almost got ourselves a um, sort of tractor tank, tank tread there which is um, exactly what we want so this is the wheel a 16 inch diameter wheel from here to here that's not the same as the tire diameter which is 32 inches and that's from here to here and this is a high profile tire which means to say that there's a long distance between the tire and the wheel that's what you want for off-roading so you can air down like this and really um, reduce the contact patch so increase the contact patch reduce the pressure and then your wheel doesn't come anywhere close to um, actually being damaged on rocks and so on okay so that's basically the key to sand driving now let's look at it in practice now here's the two cars which we took over the Simpson Desert um, they are the Havel H9 and the Great Wall Steed they were lent to us by um, Great Wall Australia and they are stock standard out of the showroom didn't even change the tires um, just loaded it up and went for it and they crossed the Simpson Desert with no problems including Big Red so let's take a look and see exactly how uh, we did that so here's the H9 off a standing start I'm going to have to work out what to talk about on this video because it's really quite boring you can see there's no run up there we just started off in low range the tires are at 9 psi on both cars and up the car goes it's rocking a bit from side to side the reason for that is because people have driven up that sand dune with relatively high pressures and they've wheel spun and that's how you start to form corrugations because the wheel spins spits out a bit of sand goes over a bump and then the corresponding vehicle does exactly the same thing and make it worse and worse and that's how corrugations are basically form so with lower tire pressures then you get much less bouncing and the tires better able to keep traction so there's the H9 slowly crawling up low range low revs low tire pressure low stress life's good you can see there from the GoPro you can see the corrugations happening you can see that the tires is really bagged out there um, those are 17 inch wheels so we, we are able to um, drop the tires quite a bit up it goes around the corner now when you turn in sand you want to avoid doing that if it's really rough going reason being is that the rear wheels don't quite follow the front wheels and then you're creating four tire marks and four sets of rolling resistance rather than just two and here's the mighty steed again a stock standard great wall steed that's a manual the h9 is an auto both in low range just chugging up the hill nice and gently the h9 is petrol the steed is diesel sorry about the exposure here but you kind of Oh, it's probably going even a bit too fast could slow that one down a little bit there a little bit too keen this is the hard bit coming up now when you was at the top and then you've got to turn um, left right and then go over that uh, lip right at the top but yeah just really just goes to show the power of low pressures and look how slow the steed's going real real slow quite boring really but you don't need to throw the car at the hill just drop those pressures and if you're trying at 18 it doesn't quite work try dropping into 16 or 15 you know every one or two psi um, once you get below 20 it makes a difference and here's the h9 going over the top you can see there is it's turning that um, two wheels of four wheels are forming different um, 
uh, marks there it's much easier to go in a straight line that way the front wheels compress the sand and the rear wheels have an easier time of it so when you do turn in sand you have a bit more momentum and um, try and do so downhill and just be wary that um, you are going to increase the drag of the vehicle there it goes over the top so just you can almost call that speed there but watch what happens over the top just up and over and as soon as it's over the top just ease off the throttle and let the momentum come down and that's a good nice safe environmentally friendly way to drive and there goes the steed oh god it's so slow but you know it's effective there's no wheel spin there look at that nine psi tires just rotating nicely around don't need a massive engine, don't need much, barely need any driving skill really, you just point it and shoot it, just got to keep the throttle going. And here we are at the top, there's the H9, and the steed will be arriving eventually in its anticlimactic way. There it is. That's the vehicles at the top, successfully achieved. So that's the key drop your tire pressures down 20 psi should you be your starting point for sand driving you should really be looking at 15 and every psi below 20 and especially 15 makes a difference to your ability to drive on sand it's all about reducing the rolling resistance once you've reduced the rolling resistance by dropping your tires down um, then just use a nice steady throttle control use the highest gear that you um, conceivably can reduce the torque to the wheels uh, keep the wheels as straight as you can um, because the more turning you do the more drag there is on the car and then happy sand driving